Hello all you scientists out there, it's P.S. Science here and today we're going to talk about the functions of the internal and external structures of living organisms and how those structures enable organisms to live and reproduce and grow. Are you ready to look at the inside and the outside? Plants and animals have many structures that help them to survive. Some structures are internal, like the lungs or the brain or heart or a skeleton. And other structures are external, like skin and eyes and claws. Some structures are unique, like the gills of a mushroom or the long trunk of an elephant or the interesting bill on a creature called a platypus. And other structures are more common, like eyes. But what is a structure and what does it mean that they have a function? For example, one of the external structures of an owl is its wings. But what is the function of the wings? Why do owls have wings? Living organisms, animals, and plants have things that are on their inside and things that are on their outside. They have internal and external structures. And there are as many different structures as there are living organisms. What I want you to do first today, scientists, is go and find a mirror. Find a mirror and take a look at yourself from head to toe. And try to identify as many of our external structures as you can. If you can get somebody to trace you, on a big piece of paper or maybe a bunch of pieces of paper all taped together it would be great to have an outline of your body and then you could identify external structures and then maybe we can learn about some of the internal structures as well humans have noses and ears and hair is hair a structure they have limbs they have arms they have legs they have eyes they have lips they have mouths but you know it's not all about humans what about plants what about non-human animals and by the way did you know that your epidermis is showing yeah everybody can see your epidermis I just wanted you to go and check that out in the mirror ouch the sharp spikes on this cactus are an external structure and the bill on this platypus is an external structure, the trunk of an elephant, the bulging eyes of a frog and its green skin, those are external structures, the gills on the mushrooms. Your epidermis is still showing, you know. Hmm, structures and function. Let's go a little bit deeper and try to figure this out thumbs. You don't really think about your thumbs until you can't use them anymore. So what I want you to do is go and get a roll of tape, like scotch tape or masking tape. Don't use duct tape because when you have to take it off, it will really hurt your epidermis. I'm going to use regular scotch tape and what I want you to do is to take a long enough piece to secure your thumb to your palm. Just going to wrap it around so I can't use my thumb anymore. And then I want you to do it to the other hand too. You might need help for the second hand. But put your thumb next to your palm, wrap the tape around, and think structure and function. Hmm, what do we do with our thumbs? Pause the video, take a few minutes, and go and do some things that you normally do. Try to tie your shoes, or turn the knob on a door, or brush your hair, or brush your teeth. Type on your keyboard. Try to do it without your thumbs, and think structure and function. I'm sure you discovered that it's not very easy for humans to operate without our thumbs. Our thumbs are called opposable thumbs, and Having the ability to do this with your thumb enables humans to do all kinds of things that other living organisms can't do. Structures and their functions are important parts of how animals adapt so 
so that they can survive and thrive in their environment. Ouch. My epidermis is stinging. Now, like our thumbs, each structure, whether it's the structure in an animal or in a plant, has a specific function. Let's think about our skeletons. On a human, or in a human, where is our skeleton? Is it on the outside or the inside? It's an internal structure. We can't actually see our skeleton without an x-ray machine, but if you tilt your head forward, you can feel your vertebra. You can feel bones, right? Your bones are part of your skeleton, an internal structure. So humans have something called an endoskeleton, but many insects like beetles, ants, ocean creatures like crabs, lobsters, they have their skeleton on the outside. It's called an exoskeleton. External structures, this crab and this insect called a rhinoceros beetle and this praying mantis, they all have an exoskeleton. What is the function of an exoskeleton? You've got an endoskeleton on the inside or an exoskeleton on the outside. You know it's that time. It's the time for Miss Sherry's One More Thing. Here's what I want you to do, scientists. I want you to think about a creature that's interesting. Not that dogs and cats aren't interesting, but pick something a little bit more exotic that has a unique structure. For example, a platypus, or an anglerfish, or maybe one of the deep sea creatures that has bioluminescence. And I want you to identify one external structure and describe its function, and then one internal structure and describe its function. The internal structures might be a little bit harder because I don't expect you to do dissections, but you can do a little bit of research. And let me show you what I'm thinking, but of course you can always modify this and be creative. What you come up with I'm sure is going to be better than what I will. And it's fascinating to identify the different structures on different organisms and to think about how those creatures or organisms have adapted and how their structures are enabling them to survive. So this was my idea and like I said you can modify it if you want to come up with something more creative. I am confident in your abilities scientists but I think that anglerfish are really fascinating. They've got this external structure where it's got a bioluminescent, like a light, almost like a light bulb. And that light actually attracts prey. And then, look at those teeth. They go after them. Fascinating to me. And so I was thinking that you could use the little booklet like this to show the external anatomy or an external function. You could describe the special structure and get into what the function of that structure is. Or if you wanted to do some more research, you could do an internal structure and describe its function. Think about this, scientists. What can you do to show external structures and internal structures and their functions? Think about giraffes with those long necks or dolphins swimming in the ocean using echolocation and bats flying through the sky also using echolocation. Structures can also work together in systems. We have many organ systems in our bodies. We have a respiratory system, which includes our lungs, our trachea, our nose, it's the mechanisms that we breathe with. We also have a digestive system, and I think you're going to like this activity. I'm going to show you a model that you might want to copy after the video to see the basics of how our digestive system works. What is the function of our digestive system? So structures can also work in systems, and this is going to be a, a demonstration, kind of, of how our digestive system works. So after you watch this, you can give it a try. I'm going to use plain crackers. And the first thing I want you to do is to hold the cracker and look at it, maybe smell it. 
And while you're doing that, I want you to notice what begins to happen inside your mouth. And you should think about this the next time you're about to eat something that you love, like pizza or a cupcake or anything that smells really good to you. Because digestion actually starts with our sense of smell. If it smells good, then you're going to be wanting to eat it, right? So first of all, take your saltine. Notice what's happening inside of your mouth. You can begin to feel saliva spit filling up your mouth. Then I want you to take part of the cracker and I want you to put it in your mouth and I want you to leave it in your mouth. First it's going to taste salty. Leave it in there until it gets nice and mushy and notice how the taste changes. Mm. I love saltines. Try not to chew or move your mouth around. And then when it gets nice and squishy and you've noticed how the taste has gone from salty to, you tell me, what has it gone to? Then you can chew it up and you can swallow. For the rest of the demonstration, we're not going to be doing like the magic school bus and traveling down through your body. We're going to show an internal system, but we're going to have to do it on the outside. Go ahead and eat another cracker. Delicious. Now, once you've chewed something up, it's actually been softened by the saliva in your mouth and then you break it up even more with more saliva and your teeth and your tongue actually pushes it down something called your esophagus. What you can feel in the front is actually in your windpipe, your trachea. But behind that, there's another tube that goes from your mouth down into your stomach. And in your stomach, there's something called stomach acid which also helps to break down the food. Remember, we're trying to figure out what is the function of the structure. In this case, we're talking about a whole system. What is the function of the digestive system? Why do we eat? We use food to get nutrients and energy. So our digestive system, the function of it, is to get the nutrients out of the food that we eat. So back to the stomach. In your stomach, you have something called stomach acid. Now. You need to use something acidic because we don't have actual stomach acid here. I'm going to use a lemon, but you could use vinegar or you could use pickle juice, anything that's acidic like that to represent stomach acid. And you're going to need a baggie. I'm going to use this plastic bag to represent the structure of our stomach. And I'm going to take some crackers. Now remember, you chewed those crackers. So come into the bag, pretend that you're chewing and swallowing. Of course you know that they would already be kind of squishy and soggy because of your saliva and chewing and tongue. Put the crackers in there. You have to chew them up. By the way, your epidermis is still showing. Okay, chew, chew, go down in the stomach. But in the stomach, they would have more moisture from the saliva, and there would also be the stomach acid. So I'm going to use a little bit of the lemon juice and some water to get it nice and mushy and show you what happens in the stomach. So I'm adding my lemon juice. Aha! Crackers down in the stomach. Mm. I'm keep squeezing it because actually your stomach goes through contractions like this. It actually squeezes and mashes up the food even more. And the stomach acid, I'm actually going to add a little bit more. The stomach acid continues to break down the food. The acid in your stomach, along with the contractions, continues to break down the food so that in the next phase, which is in your intestines, the nutrients can be absorbed. Now, the water also gets absorbed. I'm going to show you how we'll model that. I'm using this piece of a pair of old tights as my intestine. So from the stomach, the structure of the stomach, the food moves along into another structure, the intestines. There's a small intestine and a large intestine. And as the food moves through the intestine, nutrients are absorbed 
as well as water is absorbed. So as the food moves through the intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine, nutrients and water are absorbed. So I'm going to pour my stomach contents into my intestines. This is definitely going to be the tricky part. Now, when we have food moving from our stomachs into our intestines for real, we don't have to think about it, but I have to think about it now. Okay, so I'm emptying the contents of my stomach down into my intestines. Can I ask your mom if she has an old pair of tight or pantyhose or nylons? This is the most excellent part. And I'm sure you're gonna laugh because you're fourth graders. I know where we're going with this. Okay, so the food moves out of the stomach into the intestines. And as I said, as it moves down through the intestines, nutrients are getting absorbed and the water is getting absorbed too. So can you see that tripping out? Remember, the function of the structures in our digestive system are to remove nutrients so that our body has energy. Now, for the last part, I think you know what happens at the end. At the bottom of our intestines is something called our colon and then our rectum. And by the time the food has reached that point, all of the nutrients have been extracted or absorbed by the human body and what's left is just waste and then the waste has to come out. And that would be the end of the function of the digestive system. <laughs> I am on to you scientists and I know what you were thinking at the ending of the digestive system, but the truth is that's what happens. The reason that we have to go to the bathroom either defecating or urinating is because that's the waste. That's what our bodies can't use. After we have absorbed the nutrients, then what comes out is waste and you can't keep it in because if you did, actually your body would get poisoned. So structures functions and sometimes structures work together in a whole system. I know you're going to want to try that. It's pretty fun. Squeezing it through the intestines is definitely the fun part. Thanks for joining again scientists. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Okay scientists, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that lesson? Subscribe below to see more fun science videos. You can also become a member of PS Science on Patreon to support what we're doing. See you next time.